The Pacific Northwest isn't just home to forests, coffee, and tech giants. It sits on top of a chain of volcanoes capable of rewriting history in a single day. From Northern California to Canada, the Cascades are a lineup of some of the most dangerous peaks on the continent, many of them towering over millions of people who rarely think about what's beneath their feet. Just this summer, Mount Rainier reminded scientists how alive these mountains really are. More than 1,300 small earthquakes shook its slopes in only a few weeks, the most ever recorded there. None were strong enough to knock dishes off shelves, but together, they signaled that deep underground, something was moving. And if history has taught us anything, it's that ignoring those signals can be costly. Mount St. Helens proved that in 1980, when it tore itself apart in one of the most violent eruptions in U.S. history. That was one volcano, on one day. But there are more than a dozen giants here, each one with the potential to change the Pacific Northwest forever. Now, with new swarms of quakes, shifting ground, and strange gas releases making headlines, the real question isn't whether these volcanoes will erupt again, but whether we're watching the first hints of what's to come. Not all volcanoes are built the same, and the Cascades are the worst kind to underestimate. Unlike the broad, slow-moving shield volcanoes of Hawaii, most Cascades are stratovolcanoes, steep, layered peaks made of hardened lava, ash, and shattered rock. That mix makes them unstable, and when they erupt, it's rarely gentle. Stratovolcanoes specialize in explosions, towering ash plumes, fast-moving pyroclastic flows, and floods of mud and debris called lahars. The reason they exist at all lies far offshore. The Juan de Fuca Plate, a chunk of Earth's crust sitting under the Pacific Ocean, is slowly sliding beneath North America. This process, called subduction, drives water and minerals deep into the mantle, melting rock into magma. That magma has only one way to escape, up. And where it reaches the surface, it builds volcanoes like Mount Rainier, Mount Hood, Mount Shasta, and dozens of smaller cones that dot the landscape. Stretching for more than 700 miles, the Cascade Arc is a volcanic assembly line. And while not every peak erupts often, history shows that any of them can. That unpredictability is what makes the Cascades so dangerous. And why scientists treat every tremor, every gas leak, and every bulge in the ground as a potential warning sign. The Cascades have a rhythm, long silences broken by moments of chaos. And when those moments come, they can rewrite landscapes overnight. The most famous example is Mount St. Helens in May 1980. After weeks of tremors and swelling, the mountain's north face gave way in the largest landslide ever recorded. That collapse uncorked a sideways blast so powerful it flattened forests across 230 square miles and sent ash circling the globe. 57 lives were lost, billions of dollars were spent in recovery, and the Pacific Northwest learned just how destructive one volcano could be. But St. Helens is far from alone. Mount Rainier, the tallest peak in the Cascades, has erupted many times in the past 10,000 years, and its icy slopes mean even a small eruption could unleash massive lahars barreling into nearby valleys. Mount Hood erupted in the late 1700s, its ash and lava flows reminding Portland that the mountain is anything but dormant. Farther south, Mount Shasta has erupted repeatedly over the past 4,000 years, while Mount Mazama's colossal eruption 7,700 years ago created Crater Lake, one of the most dramatic volcanic scars on the continent. Even recent history holds reminders. Mount St. Helens stirred again in 2004, this time growing a new lava dome over the course of three years. It was quieter, almost surgical compared to 1980, but proof that the volcano is still very much alive. The pattern is clear. Cascades volcanoes don't erupt often, but when they do, the results are catastrophic. And the silence in between? It's not reassurance. It's buildup. For years, the Cascades have been mostly quiet, but recently, that silence cracked. In July 2025, Mount Rainier experienced its largest earthquake swarm ever recorded. More than 1,300 tiny quakes rattled the volcano in just a few weeks, at times spiking to 40 tremors an hour. Most were too small to feel, but to scientists, the message was loud and clear. Something was shifting deep inside the mountain. Was it magma pushing upward? The USGS says no. The data points instead to fluids moving through cracks in the rock. Still, it's a reminder that Rainier is active, complex, and unpredictable. And it wasn't just Rainier. Mount St. Helens, 
Mount Hood, and even Mount Adams have all registered small quakes and gas releases over the past year, the kind of background activity that scientists expect from living volcanoes. By early September 2025, USGS reported that all Cascade volcanoes remain at normal background levels. In other words, calm for now. But history shows that calm doesn't always last. Eruption cycles can shift suddenly, and swarms like Rainier's are exactly the kind of whispers that scientists watch for because sometimes whispers turn into warnings. If history proves anything, it's that the Cascade volcanoes will erupt again. The real question is, which one and how bad will it be? Scientists consistently rank Mount Rainier as the most dangerous volcano in the United States. It's not just its height, it's the ice. Rainier is covered in massive glaciers, and even a small eruption could melt enough ice to trigger lahars, walls of mud and debris racing down valleys at highway speeds. For communities in Washington, that could mean as little as 30 to 40 minutes to evacuate before entire towns are buried. Then there's Mount Hood, just 50 miles from Portland. Its eruptions are typically smaller than Rainier's, but its location makes it a serious threat. Ashfall could choke highways, contaminate water supplies, and disrupt a metro area of over 2 million people. Farther south, Mount Shasta is one of the largest volcanoes in the range. It has erupted often in the past 4,000 years, and its position near key transport corridors means even a moderate event could cut off major highways and devastate local communities. And of course, Mount St. Helens, the repeat offender. Its crater still steams from time to time, and scientists consider it one of the most likely cascade volcanoes to erupt again within our lifetimes. Another explosive blast like 1980 is unlikely thanks to the crater's collapse, but smaller dome-building eruptions, mud flows, and ash fall remain very real threats. Even the lesser-known peaks, Glacier Peak, Mount Baker, the Three Sisters, have erupted in the past and show signs of unrest. In other words, the danger isn't concentrated in one mountain. The entire arc is alive, and the next eruption could come from where it's least expected. The threats go beyond lava and ash. Power outages, flight disruptions, contaminated crops, and billions in economic losses are all part of the picture. A cascade eruption wouldn't just be a local disaster. It could ripple across the entire country. The good news is that we've never been better at tracking volcanoes. Across the Cascades, a web of seismic sensors, GPS stations, gas detectors, and satellites keeps watch 24-7. At the Cascades Volcano Observatory in Washington, scientists study every tremor, every ground shift, every wisp of gas. That network means we'd almost certainly get early warning signs before the next eruption. Days, weeks, or even months of notice, depending on the volcano. Communities near Rainier, St. Helens, and Hood already have hazard maps, evacuation routes, and regular drills. But there are limits. Monitoring coverage isn't perfect, and funding only goes so far. Some valleys still don't have dense sensor networks, and nature doesn't always play by the rules. A swarm of tiny quakes might lead to nothing, or it might be the first clue of something larger. Forecasting is still more art than science. So is a major eruption imminent? Probably not. Right now, every Cascade volcano is officially at normal background levels. But the key word is right now. The quiet we're living through is temporary, and one day it will end. The Cascade volcanoes aren't relics of the past. They're active, living systems. Mount Rainier's record-breaking swarm this summer is proof that these giants still stir beneath the surface, even if the ground above looks calm. History guarantees that another eruption will come, Maybe it's decades away, maybe longer. But as cities sprawl closer to hazard zones and glaciers retreat from warming climates, the risks grow more complicated. An eruption in the Cascades wouldn't just test scientists, it would test how prepared we really are. For now, the mountains rest. But rest isn't the same as peace. The silence will break. And when it does, how we respond will decide whether it's remembered as a tragedy or a survival story. So what do you think? Are the Cascades quietly gearing up or just reminding us who's really in charge? Drop your thoughts in the comments and let's talk about it. Thanks for watching Geosphere. Subscribe if you want more deep dives into the forces shaping our planet.